as she said, I'm Janet Ford and I'm the director of the Older Blind Project. And in order to show up Liz, I had to bring someone with me. <laughs> so I want to introduce you all to Sam Baldwin, who's an OIB client from Malvern, and he's going to give you his take on it for a moment, and then I will speak. Hey, Sam. Thank you, Janet. Uh, I entered the program, and I guess I'm one of the charter members. I started in 2011, and they've been putting up with me for five years. <laughs> uh, but I am grateful to the OIB program. Uh, I am a diabetic type 2 insulin dependent and uh, they have been providing my insulin and the doctor's visits to Dr. Bain who is also in the audience uh, and uh, were it not for OIB I would be in the donut hole within less within one to two months after the, the beginning of the year as it is it's like uh, October November when I get in and then they also help me with my Prodaxa but I'm taking 50-50 insulin which is, uh, if you bought the vials, it's for five bottles, it's $1,800 a month. If you Ooh. bought the pens, it's $2,500. Uh, and Dr. Bame is able to uh, help me get that, and it doesn't cost me anything, and I am so grateful because uh, either I wouldn't be here or I'd have to switch to something that would not work near as well. So uh, I am definitely thankful for the OIB program. Thank you so much. So now do we have your sympathies? <laughs> uh, yes, we do have Dr. Bain with us. Some of you who are from uh, the local area may recognize him from Little Rock, his association with the Little Rock Diagnostic Program. And he serves as our medical director. And believe you me, we wear him out with yes. questions. I drag him all over the state with me. And I have to tell you, not everyone would be quite so uh, gracious and kind when a little old lady sticks her arm in your face and says, look at this warp, what do you think? <laughs> I'm sorry, I just don't think I can do what he does. Um, but I, as you all know, who have been around this for a while, you know if you talk to me, uh, I'm going to get my hand in your pocket. And I want to tell you about a new program that we're doing with OIB. One of the big things that I think Sam can attest to is the social interactions that OIB provides yes, for it's everyone. Great. It's great. And we do we do several things. A lot of you have been involved in things that we do here on campus frequently and across the state. One of our uh, clients came up with the idea of let's do something to help others. We have a group here in Little Rock who are meeting weekly and they are making blankets for the neonatal unit at Children's Hospital. This gives them social interaction. This makes them feel that they are contributing members of society, and it gives the rest of us an opportunity to laugh because you talk about a good time. <laughs> this crew has it. We would like to, with your help, replicate this effort across the state. And so, therefore, if your club's interested in helping us and, and getting the materials for that, um, as Sam said, you know, mainly I'm providing, we're providing medication, we're providing equipment, we're providing training. I really don't have room in the budget to go out and be buying material. And you all have been so supportive over the years with our crock pot programs and all of those. I'd just like for you to continue that, and this year we'd like to focus on our blankets for the neonatal unit, and then when they finish those, they want to do some for, here it's called car time, which is our cancer institute. So if you're interested in that, please get with Sharon or I. And Dr. Bain, do you want to say anything? No. Uh, actually, I do have uh, one or two things. Well, come on up. <laughs> Sometimes I put him on the spot and he's just going, what, Janet? <laughs> okay, here's Dr. Bain. First, uh, very quickly, I just wanted to say I've learned a lot from, from the clients here from Sam. I learned about counted dose, which is a way of measuring out insulin uh, that visually impaired people can employ. Uh, and... Uh, 
So, so that's been quite worthwhile. The, the problems that people were visually can, uh, impaired can get in with, into with insulin are really interesting. We had a, a, a patient actually drawing up and doing everything they were supposed to, but there was no insulin in the vial. Mm -hmm. Of course, an insulin pen would have been helpful. So it, there, there's, we're just not taught all this stuff when we do our fellowship uh, and training programs. The other thing that, uh, you know, the previous speaker was talking about technology. And, uh, really uh, fantastic things are, are close to happening, and it's not just uh, science fiction uh, uh, right now, that uh, with insulin pump devices, you can have sensors that really can measure blood sugar. The information can be transmitted remotely. Uh, and somebody or a computer can be watching things, and then it can actually deliver insulin. And this uh, was in clinical trials last year in uh, type 1 diabetics and insulin uh, uh, in diabetes camps. So there are things that are becoming real right now that can make a big difference in terms of uh, uh, assistance uh, for people with diabetes. We don't need to put the dogs out of business. Uh, Yet, and I, of course, I still wonder whether or not they're multifunction dogs that are both seeing eye and hypoglycemia and sensing. The other thing that you all have read about is the uh, the automatic car that, uh, that really drives itself is I'm real so right now. <laughs> and that's uh, and, uh, uh, Mercedes in particular is pioneers the uh, engineering and. And they're convinced that the car can be safer than uh, than a car operated by ordinary people, because after all, we all think of vision as being an impairment, but uh, the incidence of uh, drivers that are impaired by alcohol, prescription drugs, and other uh, other drugs is just very very high. So anyway, I that's going to require a lot of investment, a lot of support, but we could envision a time when everybody who's visually impaired will not have to give up their driving and their autonomy, their ability to go to Kroger or to the library or, or whatever. Thank you. One other real quick thing. Uh, this is kind of a focus that DSV, which is our Division of Services for the Blind, has this year is the food insufficiency for elders. I'm sure you all read in the Democrat Gazette, they, they run an article, right now they're running about one every two weeks, about the food insufficiency in Arkansas, and we're specifically targeting elders. So for those of you who are Lions Clubs outside of the immediate Little Rock area, Please consider working with your local food pantries, and when you run into folks, please let us know if they have a visual impairment. Um, as you heard, I believe her name was Shana, say, you know, people can have a terrible visual impairment and don't necessarily look blind. It may be that they're not driving anymore. It may be folks who have just stopped attending your churches, stopped attending your meetings, they may have macular degeneration. They may have advanced RP. They can have all kinds of sight issues, and they're still functioning because they're familiar in their homes. But this is a real issue on getting folks to the grocery store and getting adequate and healthy nutrition. So I have a couple of projects going with some food banks, food pantries, throughout the state and I really encourage you all and especially is there anyone in the room who's doing the high school the, the lioness yes great project for you guys with the food banks because we really we really need that and we're dependent on that even though we do have our ongoing funding from DSV for our OIB I, we're very limited we're doing so much surgery and medical and equipment provision that all those other things, folks, I, I just don't have enough money in the budget to squeeze it out. So we appreciate all y'all do. Thanks for coming out and spending your warm Saturday with us. 
Uh, it, it means a lot to us. Thank you.